Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. You probably already know that recently Topaz Labs updated Photo AI to version 4. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use Topaz Labs Photo AI as a Lightroom Classic plugin. Also, I want to demonstrate how to crop an image in Photo AI as well. We're going to be working on this image. As you can see, it's an Nikon RAW file. It was shot with an ISO of 6400. If I zoom in, you'll see there's a considerable amount of noise. And also, I wish when I took the image that I was a little bit more tighter on the subject. So I'm going to use Photo AI to crop this in a little bit tighter. Now, I recommend that if you are going to use Photo AI as a Lightroom Classic plugin, that you send the image from Lightroom Classic into Photo AI as early as possible in your workflow. That way you'll get the best edit possible in Photo AI. Now, as you can see, I'm in the develop module of Lightroom Classic and the right hand panel, all these little eyeballs are diminished or dimmed out. That means I haven't done any edits to this raw file at all. So at this point, I'm going to send it into Photo AI to reduce the noise, maybe sharpen the subject, and to crop the image. Then I'll bring the image back into Lightroom Classic and I'll finish up my editing. Now, before I do that, I do want to mention very quickly that I have a brand new course on Photo AI. It's called Photo AI Mastery. In the description below this video, I'll have a link to my website, plus I'll have a discount code for the course. Now, I mentioned we're going to send this over right away into Photo AI, totally unedited raw file. The way I recommend you do it, because if you do it this way, you'll preserve the raw format throughout your workflow, is to go up to File, down to Plugin Extras, then all the way at the bottom of my menu is Process with Topaz Photo AI. And again, if you do it that way, we'll preserve the raw format throughout our workflow. Now, because this was a raw file to begin with, Photo AI will automatically run raw denoise on it. You can see that it did it. And if I like uh, give you a before by clicking this little eyeball at the bottom, you could see there's a considerable amount of noise and there's after, and it did a really nice job of removing the noise. Now there is something in Photo AI called autopilot. I currently have it off, but if you have this on, what will happen is it will run what it thinks is needed on the image, and then it will make suggestions of what you might want to add as well. Now, again, with autopilot on, it's running raw denoise. It's always going to do that, and it's recommending maybe I want to upscale the image or maybe I want to sharpen the subject. I did mention that I wanted to sharpen the subject, but I will do that in a moment. Let's talk about raw denoise a little bit and autopilot. When I have this raw denoise on with autopilot, you'll notice these little dots. There's a little dot by raw normal and another one by strength and another one by minor to blur. Those dots are indicating that those are autopilot settings. So Photo AI determined that raw normal should be the A model that I use on this image and strength should be at 56 and minor to blur at 28. If I move a slider off that setting, you'll notice then that the uh, little dot gets hollowed out and it changes color as well. So it's indicating now that I'm not using the autopilot setting for strength. Um, I could reset it by just moving the slider back to where this little like line is. That's the autopilot setting. Or I could just double click on the word strength and it will put it back to its autopilot setting. Now, again, if I go to, let's say, raw strong and totally taking it off its raw pilot model recommendation, and you'll notice there's no dots here at all, that means these sliders weren't moved by Photo AI at all. These are just the last settings I used when I used the raw strong AI model. So these aren't like recommended settings here or anything. You have to kind of wing this now. If you don't think it removed enough noise, move this to the right. That is the strength slider to the right or move it to left if maybe it softened the image too much. But I'm gonna stay with the autopilot setting with raw normal and just leave it the way it is. But I did mention that I did want to sharpen the subject and also I'm going to crop the image. I always like to crop early in my workflow. So I'm actually going to crop the image right now. To get to the crop tool, just click this little icon right here. When you do, you'll be in crop mode and really everything you'll find uh, in the crop 
mode settings of Photo AI are pretty typical of any crop tool in any application. Uh, typically, I like to decide what ratio I want to crop to. Most often, I'll keep the original ratio for this image. It was three by two, as you can see. But I did mention that I wanted to tighten up the crop a little bit. So maybe I want to go square, or maybe I'll go to a five by four. To do that, just go to this drop down right here, and you can see here I could do a custom crop. So I could do a free form custom crop, or I could do that square crop or the four by five, or any of these other presets, eight and a half by 11, five by seven, and so on. I think I'll try the four by five. So I'll choose that, and you'll notice because it's four by five, it's vertical. I need it horizontal. So to do that, just click these double arrows right here, and you flip it horizontal. Now it is a horizontal five by four crop. I also want to tighten it up a little more. So I'm going to go up to this top handle. You can see there's handles all around the image. And I'll just pull it down. And I want this kind of rule of thirds crossover area where they intersect to be right on the animal's eye. So I'm going to move it over that way a little bit. And I think that looks pretty good. Now, if I wanted to do a freeform crop, I could just uncheck or unturn off or just turn off this checkbox. And if the image was crooked, I could straighten it here as well. But I like the crop I did, so I'm just going to apply it by clicking Apply. And now it did. Now, I mentioned I'd like to sharpen the subject. So to do that, if it's not already listed here, I could choose, click on Choose Something Else and go to Sharpen there. But since it's listed here, I'll just click this. Now, because it's not something that Autopilot really did automatically. It's not using an autopilot setting. It just used the standard AI model, which probably was the last AI model I used when I used Sharpen. So I could really have to wing it here. So I could look at it. Did it sharpen it? I could get a before after by going right on the actual, first of all, what I recommend you do before you do that is right where it says subject, just hover over that and make sure that it actually found the subject properly. If it didn't, you'd have to go over here to edit selection and then you could use a brush or you could use a super pixel brush or an object selection option. And in my course, I explain all these and demonstrate all of them as well. So you could subtract from the selection with a brush or add to the selection with the plus brush here. But in this case, it found the uh, subject perfect. Uh, but with that said, you could click on this little eyeball then and just turn off this specific option. So sharpen is off and just see if it actually did sharpen it good enough. And it did sharpen it, but you know what? It seemed to introduce, reintroduce a little bit of noise. But I do want it maybe a tiny bit sharper. So I'm just going to stay with the standard AI model and tweak that up a little bit. I think that looks pretty good. Then I mentioned that it seemed to reintroduce a little bit of noise. So I'm going to go to raw denoise again. And I'm actually going to bring strength up a little more. And you can see there's a progress bar in the lower left-hand corner. Let it render. And once it renders, it will say enhanced. And actually, that looks pretty good. So there's before. And there's after. And I could zoom in with the slider here. And then drag it around, like in here. And there's before. And there's after. There's before. And there's after. It might be just a little bit over sharp, but... For the sake of this video and the time limitations, I don't think you guys have all night to watch. Let's just say that's good enough and I'm done. I like the way I cropped it. I like the way it removed the noise. And let's just say I like the way it sharpened the image as well. So what we're going to do now is click on this button in the lower right hand corner, export to Adobe Lightroom Classic. And when you do, it will automatically save it as a raw file. You can see it's a .dng file. So I'm preserving the raw format throughout my workflow. And it will open up and we'll put it in the same folder as the original. And if you're in a collection, it will also add it to the collection. Now, it's this is the original raw file, the unedited raw file. And here's my new raw file. And you can see that it's cropped. And now I'm going to continue my editing in Lightroom. This is a really an unedited raw file outside of Photo AI, removing the noise, sharpening the subject, and cropping the image. Now... The background's way too bright, so I'm going to take care of that right away. I'm going to go to Masking, and I'm going to select the background. And then I'm going to go to Tone, and I'm going to take Exposure down. And I think I'm going to take Highlights down, and I'm going to take the Whites down a little bit. 
and maybe even maybe, maybe open up blacks, just make it a little flatter. I could go to contrast to move that to the right. So just make it a little darker. I don't want to make it like ridiculously dark so it looks like there's a spotlight on the animal. So something like that I think looks pretty good. Then I'm going to create a new mask, and the new mask is going to be for the subject this time. And then with this new mask, I am going to, I think we'll go to the blacks, and I want to bring, like, add a little more tonal variance into the um, animal's fur, like that. And then we'll go to color, and we'll add some saturation as well. Then I'm going to finish everything off with a global adjustment and we'll go to effects and we'll add a darker vignette. Maybe something kind of heavy like that. So it is up still a little bit too sharp. I overdid the sharpening in Photo AI, but overall I think it's a decent edit. And again, here's the totally unedited raw file and here is our edited image. And if you go to the crop tool, those pixels are gone. So when you do crop in photo ai it will like remove the pixels uh from the original image so be aware of that if you don't want those pixels removed like you want the option to come back in and um, maybe change or crop up a little bit then in that case do not crop in photo ai just do everything else that i did then when you do your edit in lightroom do your cropping as well and then you'll uh, end up with the same image. But when you go to the crop tool, you could change your crop maybe back to um, three by two or something like that. So that is how to use Topaz Labs Photo AI version four as a Lightroom Classic plugin. And again, in the description of this video, I'll have a link to my website. I have my brand new course, um, Photo AI Mastery, and I'll have a discount code for you there as well. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.